One morning, two hours after dawn, the first manned rocket in the history of the world takes off from the Taruma Range, Australia. The three observers see on their scanning screens a quickly receding Earth. The rocket is guided from the ground by remote control as they rise through the ozone layer, the stratosphere, the ionosphere, beyond the air. They are to reach a height of 1,500 miles above the Earth and there learn what is to be learned. For an experiment is an operation designed to discover some unknown truth. It is also a risk. When it is 1,400 miles up, all contact with the rocket is suddenly lost. Standing by, standing by. Clear radio line to Australia. They'll be on in a few seconds, sir. Would you like the loudspeaker? Yes, we're all ready for it. All right. Hello, hello to rumor. Ready to receive your message. Over. Hello, England. Hello, England. George Harris reporting from Taruma. 0330 hours West Australian time, 1800 hours Greenwich time. Doppler monitoring has proceeded continuously since last report, but no trace has been recorded or received. Repeat, no trace. Message received. Thank you, Harris. Same this end, I'm afraid. But we want you to keep on trying. Report in six hours, will you? Over. Message received and signing off. Okay, Ma. 57 hours, huh? Yes, sir. What can I say, Judith? If they were in a plane and it was hopelessly overdue, we'd know that they were dead. But in that thing, we just don't know. They may still be alive. Yes. What went wrong there? A point on the orbit that shouldn't have meant anything. At least it didn't mean anything to us. You made every foreseeable allowance. It's frightening looking at a thing like this for long. Those tiny marks on the plastic, they seem so precise and certain at first. Then they come closer and closer till you see there are any rough scratches. Could it have been like that with our calculations? My dear, I should never have subjected you to this. When you married Victor three years ago, I ought to have taken you off the project. I wouldn't have gone. I know. That's what I was selfish enough to tell myself. You are too valuable to me here. Now listen, my dear. All these hours you've been forcing yourself to face the worst facts, well, face the hopeful ones, too. Such as? Well, your husband and the others are not merely brave. They're, they have expert knowledge. They're resourceful. Now, you're going to get some sleep. And under strict orders. Control room. Just one moment. It's for you, sir, the minister. Not Blaker. I'm afraid so, sir. Oh, come on. Hello, Blaker. I told you I'd send word if there was any change. I wish to have him like... Report? Well, I thought there was no question of that yet. Obviously, I don't want to visit this on you, but I've got to keep the committee posted. Uh, believe me, Quatermass, I'm trying to help you. The nastier the facts, uh, the more it matters the way they're presented. The whole question of future development... Oh, future development, be damned, tell them the facts. But all trace of the rocket ship was lost over 57 hours ago when it deviated from its estimated path at 25,000 miles per hour. I've already done so, Les Bluntly. Uh, you're keeping in touch with the Australian base, of course. 
Yes, they haven't got anything to report either. Look, I've had enough of this cross-examination. Your committee seemed very concerned over their limited interest, but it's an investment I was never able to guarantee. You can accept that our sole concern now is for the crew. Uh, frankly, is there any chance of their survival? Well, equally frankly, I don't. How can anybody answer a question like that? For heaven's sake, what do you imagine my concern is? What? Radio line, quick. Control room. Yeah, put them on. Hello to rumor, ready to receive you. Come in to rumor. We're getting a trace. Very faint, and the direction doesn't make any sort of sense. But it's there. A trace, oh, thank God. The rocket must be heading back towards the Earth. Confirm your receiving. Me. Receiving you loud and clear. Oh, hold it. Professor Quatermass is taking over. Hello, Quatermass here. Is the rocket responding to your remote control? Over. No response to our radio signals as yet. Estimated distance from Earth, 29,000 miles. Uh, sorry, uh, correct that to 28,600 miles. They're having difficulty in tracking. What's the direction? Can you give us code fixes? Over. We're going to do our best. Hold on. Stand by. 29.34. Repeat. 29, 34. 106259. 106259. 07. 07. Over. Message received. Stand by to compare further findings. Out. 29, 34. 106259. 07. Approaching at a very steep angle. Straight down. Not yet. Everything depends on that curve being confirmed. If it is, they may have a chance. 106259. Uh-huh. That may bring them right round the earth instead of smack into it. It's all right. I'm not letting myself go. That curve must be the end of an ellipse. Yes. Well, it doesn't tell us where they've been, but it can tell us how far they've been. What's the result? Something like 380,000 miles into space. But it can't. 380,000? But that's more than we'd ever planned for. Half as far again as the moon. You know, when I think about them out there, even now I'm jealous. To be the first, the very first. Altitude. Oh, yes, altitude. Altitude, 3,200 miles. Well, if it's ever going to respond to our remote control, it should be fairly soon. Control room. Blake has arrived, sir. He's demanding to see you. Oh, damn his demands at a time like this. I can't. All right, let him come through. All right. You can carry on. Probably. Yes, please. Keep checking that direct contact by manual. Yes, sir. If you're wise, Blakey, you'll realize that... We picked up a trace. The Australians got it first, and now it's coming through to us. What? The rocket? We believe so, yes. I tell you, hope you're right. What's being done about it? Well, we're tracking it, waiting for radio response. From the crew? From their apparatus. That's more important now. More important? Yes, the speech transmitter's been dead for a long time. Our only chance of saving is to attempt separation by remote control. And if we... Separation? I thought you hadn't understood. Now, just take a look at this model. Now, the rocket's made up of two sections weighing about a thousand odd tons altogether. Now, in front is the crew section, where those three men are. Yes. Now, behind is the atomic propulsor unit. Now, our purpose was modest enough. To gain a height of 1,500 miles, make certain observations there. That would take about uh, 47 minutes. Then, after a single circuit of the Earth, the crew containing section was to be separated <laughs> and brought back, mm -hmm. leaving the atomic propulsor behind. 940 tons of it, and all dangerously radioactive. We wouldn't attempt to bring that back, even if we could. Uh, you mean it would just uh, stay there? Forever, or until called for, circling the Earth 1,500 miles up. Sounds simple enough. Uh, much too simple to accept. Well, it wasn't, like a... wasn't simple. Something went wrong. We don't know what it was. Probably never shall know. Probably something as simple as valve failure. But surely... Oh, you can assure your committee that we had spares and spares of the spares. But instead of turning into the prearranged orbit, like that, the rocket kept gaining speed, shot out into space like that. And you believe that what you're tracking now is it? 
Well, if the path it took happened to be a true ellipse, mm -hmm. not just a parabola, then dynamic laws bring it near the Earth again. But unless we're successful in separating the two sections, well, they'll just sweep past, and this time it'll be for good. Well, of course, it, 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 one eight two one 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 two four zero seven zero minus four. Zero minus four. That's it. It's responding. That's it. Yes, there's no doubt about it. British control base to BR7. Control base to BR7. Are you receiving me? Control base to BR7. Hello, BR7. Green, Reichenheim, Karoo. Victor, Victor. Are you able to receive me? Over. That may mean nothing. The great thing is to get control. Strong response, sir. Right. Position. Automatic doctor's working. Good. Judith, stand by. Quick changes. Yes, I will. I'm going to try and regain control. No, 419. Yes, 419. That's it. Full response. You, you've got it. All right, for a start. What next? The separation? As soon as you get the B deviation down to nil. Travelling at 25,000 miles an hour, Blake. 25,000? Yeah. Can we do it? De deviation point zero zero seven. Hello, to rumor, to rumor base. We've made contact with the rocket. It's obeying remote control. Professor Quatermass is about to attempt separation of sections one and two. Please stand by. Deviation point zero zero two, point zero zero one, nil. Yes. Wait. That's it. That's it. That's it. He's done it. He's done it. Stand by. Keep your eyes on it. Sorry. Now for the reversal. Marsh check gimbal system. Eight nine, three zero. Zero. Right, full response. Zero to 30. 40. Reversal procedure being carried out. Full response. You see, Blaker, this is the only way we have of checking velocity. Turn it about and fire propulsion units against the direction of the flight. Turn completed. Hello to rumor. Speed of first stage has been reduced. Descent has begun. Over. You're directing it down to us? Sir. No. No, we ha can't risk losing control. It's up to you. Good luck. Over. Thanks. Please stay in contact. Bye bye. Well, you say it. Very first time they have a chance. Yes. Past the Channel Coast now. Velocity? 840 per hour. Check. 845. It's far too fast for that altitude. The steel paddle brake's not enough now. We shall have to use the other, sir. Wait, wait, not too soon. Yes, it's still far ahead of the speed of sound, isn't it? Yes. Connect me to all stations. We can all wing drag. Landing gear extended. Still not enough. Marsh? 810. We've got to use the other. Mars here calling all sections. Now listen carefully, please. The rocket is still under control. We intend to bring it down here in three minutes' time. Now there may be some danger. Go at once to emergency points. Fire and crash brigades, ambulance, stand by. We're applying fabric paddle brakes. One, two, three. Great Scott, three's failed. 720, 690. What's happening that altitude? It's impossible. They must be able to do something. They must. Calling the R7, calling the R7. Are you receiving That's me? That's useless. All rocket motors on seven seconds. 490, 460. Got to fall short. Can't reach the station. Okay. Two seconds, two seconds. Speed, 230, 210. They're nearly done. They crashed. Yes, yes, but where? Quickly, where? Just getting it, sir, just getting it. <clears throat> well? Only ten miles away. I make it just southwest of London. Croydon. No, nearer than that. We must know, we must know. We haven't got a minute to lose. Come on. Oh, that smoke! 
boy's going to go off. Come here, Len. Come here. Sh shut up. It looks sort of like steam. All that just now. Roaring flames. Oh, my God, Len. It's something dreadful. Hey, come away, Len. You're out of your mind. Yeah. Somebody ring the fire brigade. And the police. Oh, Len will be done for. Yeah, there'd be the old girl. What? Over there in the house. She'd be inside. They're not going, Len. She's dead. She must be. It's no, no good. Look, leave me be. Here, what do you make of this? Never seen anything like it. Here, keep clear. It's red hot. It's one of them things. They finally dropped one. It's going to go off, don't you see? Here, there's old girl in the house. Then why didn't you... Keep away, everybody. This thing may be dangerous. You in those next houses, grab some clothes and get away. Come on. What is it? Hurry up, baby. What is it? Len, Len, your poor, she's dead. She must be. Len. I'm busting. Wait a sec. There's somebody up there. Look. Can you get hold of a ladder? I know where there's one. Right. Ma, you all right? Yes. I was trying to catch Henry and put him in his basket. Right. We'll get, have you down in a moment. Okay. That's it. Yeah, right, I'll put it up here. <laughs> oh, that was about me. Yeah, about me. Would you keep Henry first, Steve? Right. Thank right, you. I'm ready. Are you all right now? You're not hurt? She wouldn't know, man. Never heard a shock. But what is it, officer? Have they started again? Look, is there anybody else in there? Oh, no. Who could there be? All right. <laughs> you know, I was just going to bed, and then the noise came, and that bright light, and poor Henry, he scampered under the dressing table. Oh, dear, oh, dear, what is it? Here, get it to somewhere safe. I've got to report okay, this. Okay. Has that gone off yet? No, not yet, Marvin. Now, come on. Step, lift your feet up now. Oh, That's it, my yes. dear. Oh, look. Look, my mother's clock. Are you sure that thing hasn't gone off? No, not yet. <laughs> but there must be a report in by now. Look here, old man, you know who I am, and it's not under official secrecy anyway, so... No, no, get it out of them. No, it was not a guided missile, but it, it crashed somewhere in South London. Listen, you collect all the reports from the squad cars and men on the beat, don't you? What? Oh, all right, I'll hang on. He says the report just coming in. Hello? Where? West side of Wimbledon Common? Yeah, let me see. Here's Quatermass himself. Hold on. Hello. How bad is it? I'm oh, still whole. Much damage. Any casualties? No, oh, thank God. Now, listen, I'm on my way over now. Don't let anybody touch it. And for heaven's sake, keep the fire people off it. Hosing a red hot rocket will blow it up and there are three people inside. Right? Right. Come on, John. What does he say? Well, it's still in one piece and not too badly buried. I, it's more than I'd hope for. Anything about them? No, not yet. The car's outside. Right, come on. He, what? How many were killed? Injured? None. Hello, hello. Yes, this is still the news desk. Have you seen the thing yourself? What did it look like? Uh huh. Uh huh. Time? What time did all this happen? Eh? You must know when. Poor Jacko. All right, then. How junior can a junior local correspondent be? <laughs> Gone to ask the man in the next phone box when it happened. What is it tonight? The man with staring eyes or robbed while they watch television? Something came down at Wimbledon. Came down? Crashed. Oh, mystery plane. Good night, Jacko. Sounded more like a flying saucer scare. Lots of stuff about a light in the sky and smoke and... Uh... Hello? Only ten minutes ago. All right, I'll send somebody. Meanwhile, get what you can yourself and phone it in. And wake up! Flying saucers? Who are you going to send? Jackson, if he's back. Hello, hello. I'll do it. Hello, there's Arthur Jackson there. You? But, Jimmy, this is just a straight, right-out job. Not full of love stuff at I all. I need something to denounce, Jacko. After dietitians and graphologists and the English flower show, something that's somebody's fault. Now, lay on a snatch, Arthur, will you? All right. But it's got to be in right away, remember? Oh, dear. Back on the beat. 
If they're so sure it's not a bomb, why treat it like a bomb? Look, I've told you the instructions. Leave it dead alone, all right. But there's still smouldering wood inside there that we can't put out because the thing's jammed up against it. All right, it's not my fault. Keep back there, will you? There'll be a report in about this. Here, is it true the bomb disposal people are on their way over here to de it? Look, I've told you before, keep back. Well, Leonard, I suppose everyone calls me Len, though. Matthews. Did you make a noise coming down? Terrifying, that's the word, terrifying. There was this great blare of light, and then the old neighbourhood sort of shuddered. And smoke, smoke everywhere, stinking. I'll tell you, I never met anything I like I told that. you to get back. But I've got to get a story. Now, this is final. Nobody beyond that rope there. Now, look, we've got a public duty, too, or haven't you heard? Back behind there, please. Tell those people they can't come through. Sergeant, stop them. One minute. One minute, Inspector. This is Professor Quedemus. He'll be in charge from now on. Oh, very well, well sir. Professor, you Now can then. Sheets. I've got a heavy casing between them and the outer surface. Funny. It looks exactly the same. Yeah. Just a bit darker in colour. And yet it's been... Well, you can't just say far. There isn't a word. Their transmitter's probably gone altogether now, but I'll just try it. Yes, go ahead. Hello, hello. This is Marsh speaking. Are you receiving me? Over. No, gentlemen, no statement. This is absurd. If that thing's a secret weapon, tell us we can use discretion. I doubt, don't doubt it for a moment. Hey, but, look, uh, they're using some sort of walkie-talkie. There must be somebody inside the thing. I knew it all the time. Fred, stand by for a picture. How long do we have to wait? Three or four hours, I'm afraid. I can't, not like this. You think it's still intact? As far as I can see, sir, yes. Professor Quittermouth. Wait a minute. I thought I knew that face. British Experimental Rocket Group, isn't it? Yes. So that's it. Fred. Some other time, gentlemen. It's all please. right, it's all right. Uh, let's have the story. So what is that thing? It's a rocket, it's isn't been it? It's kept yes. very secret. Where was the takeoff? Western Australia. It's a rocket. Australia? Yes. But it's travelled halfway around the world. A lot further than that. You've been uh, conducting an experiment. Yes. How many aboard? Uh, do you know who's aboard? Three, Three men. Are they safe? I don't know. Oh, what are their names? You should get no reply on your instrument just now. Green, Rackenheim, Crew. Well, what happens now? What are you waiting for? Mr. Quatermass, what was the object of this experiment? Stop! Stop the noise! Listen. Do you hear it? The tapping. They're alive. This is the BBC Light program. Before the late news summary, here is a special item. Just over one hour ago, a British made rocket vehicle, the first ever to have succeeded in reaching outer space, made a safe crash landing in the area of Wimbledon Common. A product of the British Experimental Rocket Group, it carries a crew of three men. They will be unable to leave the rocket until its surface has cooled, but there is reason to suppose they are in good health. In view of the importance of this achievement, and because the appearance of the rocket has given rise to a number of rumours, we shall be relaying a short description of the scene at the end of this bulletin. Really, Miss Wilde, you don't remember much about it, do you? No, except that everything fell down and then I saw my room was quite, quite broken. Yes, it's indeed tragic that your house should have suffered. But I think we can salute in the story of brave men, a brave little lady. Oh, Henry was brave too. Henry? Yes, my Oh, Henry. yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Miss Wilde has her cat with her. Uh, he doesn't appear to be at all frightened, does he? No, no, not my Henry. Uh, uh, no. The scene here now is one of complete jubilation. There's a tremendous crowd coming in by car, on foot, from every direction. People are singing and cheering. I can even see some barrow boys over there cashing in. Ah, oh, yes, and here now to pick up the story is Mr. Leonard Matthews, who lives nearby and, I believe, was first on the scene, weren't you, Mr. Matthews? Yes. Well, I've seen this great blare of light. Len was out of the house in a flash. Ah, uh, Mrs. Matthews? Not a moment's hesitation. Just as he was all through the Blitz, I think you ought to have a medal. Well, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Matthews, uh, what did you see exactly? Well, there was all this here smoke, and I got busy putting out the fire. Can't we signal again? We've answered once. To let them know where they are, that we're here. Well, that would mean a lot of hammering on the hull. It might be dangerous. Uh, Professor Quatermass, 
Yes. Uh, BBC interview with you. Uh, I think you ought to, Quaid of us. This way. Please. We're making history. We're making history. We're making history. Well, it's very difficult for me to say. I'm not exactly in a senior position, you see. Listen, I wouldn't like my to dear friend, you know what's the matter with you, don't you? You're too modest. That's what's the matter. You're, you're, you're too modest. Go on, tell them. Tell them that you invented it. Yeah, no, but I didn't. Well, go and take a jump. Yes, you did. You're too modest. He did it, really. But you're too modest altogether. Now, you ought to be much too modest as you are. You know why you are like that. Uh, Professor Quatermass, it's true to say, isn't it, that this atomic rocket, the very first of its kind, is a tremendous technical advance. Well, yes, I dare say we have surprised a few people. Oh, I should say so, indeed. Designed and built entirely by British brains and muscle. And now, Professor, uh, can you tell us something about the crew? Well, it's, uh, we shan't know that for a few hours. Well, no, you? sir, I, I meant some personal details. Who are they oh, exactly? Sorry. Well, <clears throat> the senior member is my friend and colleague, Charles Green. He's responsible for navigation. Well, we employ automatic piloting, of course, in our own... Remote control. I see, yes. Is Mr. Green married? Yes, oh, yes, yes. His wife arrives by comet tomorrow from Australia. I see. Who else? Well, then there's uh, Dr. Ludwig Reichenheim. I expect you remember his experiments with rockets in Germany before the war, don't you? Oh, yes, 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 indeed I do, yes. yes. Well, the youngest member is Victor Carew. He's responsible for as engineer and radio operator. And sort of so general on. gadgets, yes, etc. Is, him, is he married? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, his wife is my first assistant. Oh, really? Yes, she's over there. Oh, it, it, it must have been a frightfully anxious time for her, yes. for you all. Yes, yes, yes. But we hope soon now to have some good news of these three valiant Britons, or British subjects. Uh, thank you, Professor. Oh, 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 yes, and now, now here is the wife of one of them, Mrs. Caroon. Mrs. Caroon, there's no need for me to tell you how much all listeners must sympathize with your great anxiety. Oh, thank you. Tell me, how does it feel to be married to one of the first three men to reach the outer space? Well, I'll know that when I see him. Yes, of course. Uh, you weren't able to go to Australia. Uh, no, my work here. Yes, of course. If you don't mind my asking, what was your farewell message? Oh, it was silly. Just the sort of thing people always say at a serious time like that. I think I said, take care of yourself, darling, and don't forget to bring me something back. <laughs> a sort of present from outer space, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you very much indeed, thank Mrs. Caroon. Well, now, listeners, as nothing more is going to happen here for some hours, I'm returning you to the studio. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Well, OK, pack up. You know the trouble with you now, is sir, that my you're dear, too sir, modest. You Give me that. that, that you're too modest. Oh, How dare you put your hands on me like that? How dare you? You're a lot of ruddy, modest English violets. The whole lot of you. All right, she be quiet. It's fascinating, Professor Greater Mouse, that. Elemental excitement children feel with a brown paper parcel that's just waiting to be opened. The longer you wait, the more exciting it gets. Is that why you don't pull the string, Professor? That will sound better in your column tomorrow than it does now. I expect so, if I'm not frozen stiff before then. Oh, how touching. They sent an ambulance for me. Check temperature again. Yes, sir. It's quite cool now. It's about 100 degrees. Ambulance standing by. Thank you, Inspector. Uh, how do you mean to do it, sir? By remote control, if we can, as soon as we get, uh, get contact again. Otherwise, you'll have to tear the parcel open, is that it? Just look at that crowd watching in dead silence. Little boys who look anxiously over your shoulder, Professor. Sir, sir. See them watching now, standing on tiptoe, pressing forward. Not a word spoken. That's it, that's it. Thank God. Sit down. Sit down. 
The access chamber to the motor. Mr. Green, Dr. Reichenheim. I don't understand. How could they? There's nobody there. There's no sign of either of them. What's that? They're gone. They're gone. What's going on? I don't see. Picture friend. As a matter of interest, this happens to be news. What's my about? What's the matter? They're not inside. But unless they open the door and got swept away. I've checked all the instruments. That door hasn't been opened till now. Victor. Where are the others? Victor. Victor! What happened? Victor! 